Okay. Are we live? Can everybody hear? Let's turn it up. Okay. Can you hear me now? One, one person. One wow. Person Thank you so for just tuning in. Still waiting for all people to transfer over here now. I don't know how this works, okay, we but we are. Go. Okay, there we go. I think we are live. Okay. Can you hear me? Can you? I can't see the comments. Chris. Chris. Can you hear us, Chris? Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Yes, maybe. Can Can you hear us? Can you hear us? Yes. Okay, perfect. All right. Sorry for the technical difficulties. We're back. We hear you. Okay, we're back okay. on. Okay. All right, so since no one heard me, maybe it's your speakers, not <laughs> mine, so, you know. I think my speaker. I, I, I hear myself, so <laughs> check your speakers, all 30, well, 10 of you now. Okay, so Kristen just read 14 through 20, and uh, as, I, as I said to bo before to myself, um, uh, the summary part is, is pretty pretty simple. Again, if you have been following us the last couple weeks, the structure that we have been using is we, we read a text and we do a brief summary and then we ask a few different questions. First question being, what does this text say about God? The second question being, what does this say about people? And the third text, or the third question, if this is true, and we believe it is, uh, how are we going to apply this to our, our lives? So, pretty simple. Uh, after Jesus was baptized, he began his ministry, and uh, his message was pretty simple. The message was, repent and believe in the gospel. Turn from sin and follow me. And uh, then instantly he began to seek out his disciples. And the first four men that he sought out were all fishermen. Uh, Simon, who was Peter, Andrew, James, and John. And uh, he called them, said, drop what you're doing and come follow me. Uh, I'll make you fishers of men. And immediately, they dropped what they were doing and followed him. So I'll pose the first question. And again, we, we strongly invite your participation. So the first question is, what does this text say about God? So we'll let you guys participate before we start blurting out our thoughts on this. So what does this text, Mark 1, 14 through 20, say about God? We're live. <laughs> well, Kristen, as we wait, what do you think this says about God? Okay, so <clears throat> the um, what stuck out to me first was that God in his holiness demands repentance. Um, verse 15, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. Um, it's an order, it's a command, and, um, you know, I mean, that for all of us now, too, um, but just, like I said, I mean, I think it's, it's, it's a demand, it wasn't a repent if you want to, it was a firm repent, believe in the good news, in yeah. action, I guess. Yeah, I think it, uh, it demonstrates, uh, what God expects of us, of, uh, demonstrating true faith. You know, true faith is not just this casual belief or head knowledge of God. Uh, true faith is displayed through repentance, displayed through obedience, and a desire for repentance, a desire for obedience. And, and really for a believer, it's, it's, it's a lifestyle, uh, a lifestyle of repentance, a lifestyle of growing in our hatred for sin and growing in more and more desire for God and desire for righteousness. So mm -hmm. do you see anything else that this says about God? Yeah. Um, also I think, let's see, verse, um, just shows God's authority that Jesus could tell them basically drop what you're doing and follow me again, just another command, but it just shows, I think God's authority to be able to do that. Yeah, and I would also say it's uh, what's really cool is that it shows that Jesus um, he seeks out the lost. Uh, these men were not seeking Christ; Christ sought out them, 
And so I think that's just a cool reality uh, that, that God seeks out the lost. He draws them to, draws us to himself. And so that's just a, a really cool uh, reality and uh, characteristic of, of God. Yeah. So I'm sure if you see anything else, yeah. if there's anyone else who would like to add on to that. Okay. God speaks and people listen. Yes. Yep. All right. So, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll move. We'll move forward. Um, it's pretty pretty short short text tonight. So, uh, uh, so next question will be: What does this text say about people? What does this text say about people? Again, if you're just tuning in with us, we're looking at Mark chapter one, verses fourteen through twenty, and this time is meant to be participation, not just. Kristen and I shouting out our, our thoughts. So Mark 1, 14 through 20, we just looked at what does this text say about God. Now we're looking at what does this text say about people. Yes, and Tim, responding to the first question, he chose regular people, not religious ones. Yes. Absolutely. Jesus was definitely the most harshest on the religious elites who thought much higher than they ought to have. He sought out the humble. So, good observation, Tim. I think it shows that all people have a longing in their heart for their creator. Um, I think when Jesus was talking about, you know, come follow me, leave your, leave your jobs, leave everything behind, they so quickly did that. And I think that just shows the, the deep desire that we all have as God's created beings. I think there are times we pursue other stuff and there are people who are trying to pursue something that will fulfill them and they're looking for happiness or whatever it may be. And um, we all have that, that desire for our creator. And when we pursue him, that is when true happiness comes. But I think that just shows how they, they just dropped everything right away and they just followed him, no questions asked. Um, and I think we all kind of find that in ourselves too. Yeah, and to piggyback off of that and to piggyback on Alexis, Alexa's comment that she loves the words at once. They left their nets, and without mm -hmm. delay, yep. he, he called them. Um, yeah, I think this is a – yeah, I love I love their response. Like it wasn't, I'll think about it, I'll contemplate on it, tell me about it a few more times, and then I'll give you my final decision. It was, mm -hmm. you know, they, they dropped what they were doing. Even – you know, James and John, who were with their father, um, left their father. And this wasn't, from my understanding, this wasn't a, uh, well, hey, Dad, we'll, we'll see you at 9 o'clock. We'll be back at 9. This was, we are committing to following this man for the next, well, three years, day and night. And so it wasn't um, just a few hours where they were going to be gone. They, they left their own father to follow mm -hmm. follow Jesus. And even at, the, at this point, you know, they didn't even fully grasp who who Jesus was. Um, but I think it still teaches us this this reality that God is calling us, and like we have a response to make. Mm -hmm. um, there's a there's a thing that a lot of people say that you have to hear, or people have to hear the gospel like X amount of times before they can respond, and uh, I just I just don't see that in Scripture anywhere. And now, granted, God works on pe people's hearts different ways, so. For, for many people, that is true. That's I'm not saying it's not, but you don't really see that in Scripture. Like you see these men, boom, they followed him, and then you, you read the Book of Acts. I mean, the gospel was proclaimed, and then daily thousands of people were coming to faith in Christ. Um, and I, I believe that's still true today. Like I believe wherever the gospel is proclaimed, people are going to respond, and people are going to reject it. Mm -hmm. um, so, just a, just a thought. Um, so to read some of these, they were ready for a leader. Yes, yep. they were. The closer you were, oops. The closer Sorry. your relationship with Jesus, the more faith grows. Absolutely, Alex. I'm always striving for this kind of obedience. Yep. We all are, and we're all working. God is continuing to work in us. Yeah, Rhonda says, the people are just doing the ordinary daily life when Jesus calls them. That's right. Um, not everyone has a, a, you know, this 
crazy testimony story and like for a lot of people it's we're just living ordinary lives and God gets a hold of our hearts yep do you have Absolutely. anything else to, to to add to that well and I think too like goes without saying they chose to trust Jesus too like you said it wasn't like oh I'll be back and couple hours and see my dad it was okay I'm trusting that I'm going and I don't know when I'll see you know my blood family again um, and trust is hard in the unknown mm -hmm. yeah yeah you know we'll get more into it as we begin to mark but you know it's just with their response I mean it was counting the cost like it, there was a yeah. cost to following Christ and that's obviously still true for us today there is a cost in following christ it's mm -hmm. not this come follow me and your life will be a thousand times better you'll get everything right. you want like there is there is a cost uh there is uh, i mean following christ it's a, it's a call to it's called a death death is self and uh call, mm -hmm. call to surrender um there's there's pain and there's suffering and we share in the sufferings of christ as we follow him so yep. they would have known that mm-hmm so let's uh, let's move move forward. So last question is if this is true, which it is, how will we apply this text to our lives? Yeah. Yes, it is worth it. It's worth. Absolutely. I think um, <clears throat> towards the end here, follow me is all about discipleship um and it's it's one repentance and surrender and, and that's the start of discipleship truly trusting in christ alone but then the next step is um of ministry really in discipleship is serving others um and so that's why i lost my verse here but um how was it worded follow me and i will i will have you be fishers of men and so, first follow Jesus, and then serve serve your neighbors, serve fellow men. Um, and I think that's what discipleship is. I mean, it's following Christ and it's serving other people, and um, that's the way he's using that metaphor with with fish. And I think it, I think it's it's the cool reality. Um, uh, one of the reasons why God saves us. Um, it's not just to save us personally, that's all part of his plan, but it's also so that we can join him in what he is doing here on earth to reach other people for Christ. So Jesus has, you know, yeah, he, he, he has, he wants to save us personally, but he also wants to invite us in to be a part of his, his work to reach, reach the lost form and to bring them in into, uh, mm -hmm. his, his family. So, uh, it's really cool. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, that was, a, that was a really great observation, Kristen. So, <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, I think uh, another another point I would make, kind of going back to uh, another another uh, question, but uh, I think you know, for us as we read this text, I think it again, many many of us, many of you listening in, participating, you know, you've been following for following Christ for years. Um, so you've, you know, you've already made that initial decision, but for some people, I think this is just, you know, uh, that may be like a wake up call to like, okay, you, you, you know, who Jesus is, you know what he's done for you. Um, what do you think? Um, kind of going back to the, the whole thought of like, well, it takes X amount of times to, to, before you mm -hmm. respond in faith, but like, we just, you don't necessarily see that in scripture. So to me, like it's just this just demands like a response from from people, like either embrace Christ or just reject Him. Uh, mm -hmm. um, just choose, I, I guess. It's not to sound you know harsh, but I think that's a that's a that's a crossroads for a lot of people. Like they just like eh, you know, maybe maybe in a few years, or I'm just not ready yet, and um, I'm praying God would would turn on people's hearts then, because mm -hmm. it's. God's work at the end of the day. Yeah. Whoops. 
I think I need glasses. This message is very relevant to us now since we cannot meet in a physical building. Being intentional about sharing the gospel is still important now, even if we have to be creative yep. how we do it. Totally Absolutely. agree, Alexa. Yep. And I believe now more than ever is the time to do it. So, mm -hmm. Because I think people are, people are seeking hope, and yep. they're perhaps looking for hope in worldly or temporary solutions and Christ is the only mm -hmm. eternal solution. Yep. Yep. Do you have anything else to add? I don't think so. Kind of like you said, it was a, it was a short text. Um, sorry, our beginning of our first video, if anyone's tuning in now, we... Oh, there was nothing wrong with our speakers. It's all <laughs> 27 years, so... Oh. We I could, finally I, got our sound working. I heard myself fine, so I was, um, I was all set. But, you know, just through this six verses, you know, like we've we've said, it's just that, that act of repentance and servanthood kind of all compiled into one. And it makes me think of two. If any of you like Kyle Eidelman, he has a great video series called Not a Fan. Isn't that what it's yeah. called? Yeah. And he talks a lot about fans of Jesus versus followers of Jesus. Um, and this passage just brings me back to a lot of his videos about, um, you know, Jesus is saying, come follow me. And in the video series, he talks about just a lot of people who are fans. And it's a life with a little of Jesus sprinkled in versus a sold out life. And this is challenging because they dropped everything and, and they fully surrendered right there. And that's every aspect of life, not not the easy ones to surrender. Yeah. Every part to surrender. Yes. Yes, Jess, we agree. Hearts are searching. Amen. Yep. Yep. Well, let me, uh, let me close this in prayer. Thank you all for, for joining us. Thank you for sticking with us despite your sound problems. Let's pray. Father, thank you for this time. I just thank you for the truth of um, what we've read in Mark, Lord. Uh, just, uh, God, help us. Um, we need your help, your spirit. Um, God, it's it's challenging, Lord, and just the reality that these men were willing to leave everything, God, and that's what you're calling us towards, to drop everything and to follow you, God, and that's a daily decision, Lord, and so, uh, God, it's only by your spirit that we are capable of doing that, Lord, and God, we're thankful that it is completely and solely by your grace that we are saved, and God, it is not up to us. God, we depend on what you have already done for us on the cross. And God, we, we live and we trust by that grace. And we thank you, Lord, for it. And God, thank you for all these people who have been participating. God, I pray that you be with them. Keep them healthy and safe amidst this uh, virus and all of their family as well. Thank you, Lord, again for this time. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. See you guys next week. Tomorrow night there is another yep. study right at 9 o'clock. So if you are able to join in then, we'll see you then.